And welcome back for Genesis chapter 25 today. Verse 1. Now Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. And if you haven't joined us in a couple days, um, Abraham's wife Sarah had died. She passed on. Verse 2. She, Keturah, bore to him Zimran and Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua. Jokshan became the father of Sheban, Sheba and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Asherim and Letu, Letushim and Leumim. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephah and Epher and Hanok and Abida and Eldah. All these were the sons of Keturah. Now Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But to the sons of his concubines, Abraham gave gifts while he was still living and sent them away from his son Isaac eastward to the land of the east. So Isaac got the inheritance, but the other sons were well taken care of as well. Verse 7. These are all the years of Abraham's life that he lived, 175 years. Again, a telling sign that something was now different in the earth's environment post-flood that resulted in the life of man to decrease in years in comparison to what we read about pre-flood. Verse 8. Abraham breathed his last and died in a ripe old age, an old man and satisfied with life, and he was gathered to his people. Then his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Ze Zohar the Hittite, facing Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried with Sarah his wife. Verse 11, it came about after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac lived by Bir Lahai Roy. And if you missed the reading of Genesis chapter 3, we discussed that the burial sites of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their wives is still a site that you can uh, visit at the cave of Machpelah today. Verse 12, now these are the records of the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's maid, bore to Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names, in the order of their birth. Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kedar, and Adbeel, and Mibsam, and Mishma, and Duma, and Masa, Hadad, and Tima, Jetur, Nafish, and Kedma. These are the sons of Ishmael, and their, these, are their name, by, <clears throat> these are their names, by their villages and by their camps, twelve princes according to their tribes. Verse 17. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people. They settled from Havilah to Shur, which is east of Egypt, as one goes towards Assyria. He settled in defiance of all his relatives. So just as God said in Genesis chapter 17, verse 20, Ishmael had 12 sons. They lived in the Arabian Peninsula from the north central Arabia to an area between Beersheba and Egypt. The Ishmaelites lived in hostility toward all their brothers, which fulfilled God's word to Hagar in Genesis chapter 16, verse 12. The Islamic faith claims that Ishmael is the ancestor of several prominent Arabian tribes and a forefather of Muhammad. Verse 19. Now these are the records of the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Ar 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 Aramean of Paddan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean, to be his wife. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord answered him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Verse 22. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is so, why then am I this way? So she went to inquire of the Lord. Okay, I looked up the Hebrew word for struggled, used in verse uh, 22 here. Uh, in relation to the children in Rebecca's womb, which by the best of my ability is pronounced ratzatz in Hebrew, and it means to crush, bruise, or oppress. 
And as we're about to read is a foreshadowing of the lives of these children to come. All right, verse 23. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples will be separated from your body. And one people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. And as God said, we'll, we will see Jacob's descendants, the Israelites, and Esau's descendants, the Edomites, continuously fighting with one another. It was against the natural order of family structure that Jacob the younger would be master over Esau the older. And the question that arises, as we've already seen with other patriarchs we've studied, is, is that is God orchestrating these events or does he just see further down the road? Personally, I believe this will become clear as we continue on, especially in the light of fulfilled prophecy. But again, I want to leave preconceived notions aside and let scripture do the talking here. However, I am alive and breathing and of course will have an interpretation uh, that sometimes I will share. But ultimately, I want everyone watching to come to their own understanding based upon prayer and what we study. Verse 24. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Now the first came forth red, all over like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau. Uh, the name Esau literally means hairy, and the word Edom, of which will be Esau's descendants, means red. And I'm not sure if the baby had really good circulation or what, uh, but that's what we, we were told. Verse 26. Afterward, his brother came forth with his hand holding onto Esau's hill. So his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was 60 years old when she gave birth to them. And I'm going to read a quick segment from the Wolverd and Zuck Bible study commentary regarding Jacob here, because he is, um, Jacob's a very significant person in God's story. It says, the second twin was born grasping Esau's heel. In view of the oracle the parents had received in verse 23, it seems appropriate to give this child a name that would preserve the memory of this event. The name Jacob, meaning may God protect, was selected because of its connection in sound and sense to the noun aqueb, or in English, heel. The verb aqueb means to watch from behind. But as with Esau, so Jacob's name would take on a different sense later in life as his deceptive nature became evident. His name also meant one who grabs the heel, or one who trips up. So the twins' births had great significance for later events in their lives. God's fulfillment of his promise to Abraham was carried out by his election of Jacob, later the nation Israel. Um, so Wolverd and Zuck lean toward God's sovereign, sovereignty. At the same time, on the human side, prayer was necessary. God's promise is not carried out except through faith in his supernatural work. God later gave Israel the promise, but it would not come without Israel's struggle. Verse 27. When the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a peaceful man, living in tents. Now Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. We got an issue here. <laughs> Verse 29. When Jacob had cooked stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. And Esau said to Jacob, Please let me have a swallow of that red stuff there, for I am famished. Therefore his name was called Edom. So we definitely know this guy's favorite color and um, looks like the translation for that red stuff. Uh, who knows? Could have been Campbell's soup. Verse 31. But Jacob said, First, tell, first sell me your birthright. Okay, this was a bold move by Jacob here. According to Deuteronomy 21, 17, the birthright was a double portion of the family inheritance. And Exodus chapter four, verse 22 also reveals that it included the right to be family chief and priest. So he was giving up a lot for some soup. Verse 32, Esau said, behold, I'm about to die. So of what use then is the birthright to me? The Hebrew word muth, which translates to die in English here, can be used figuratively or literally. And by the context, appears that Esau was a bit on the dramatic side. And obviously he was rash and ignorant too, and didn't take matters of God very seriously for which he would suffer consequences later. Verse 33, And Jacob said, 
first swear to me. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went on his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Okay, so that's it for uh, the chapter today. Hope you guys can join me tomorrow for chapter 26. Talk to you soon.